So the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, inductees for 2020 came out today. And as usual, pretty much every time I hear about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductions, uh, a little miffed, a little pissed. Uh, this time more directly just because of some names that are on there that just, you know, at least they got the nomination, I guess, but also snubbed in favor of what the hell. So, uh, you know, just going to give my heavy metal hard rock opinion on some of this and why, you know, the hall desperately, desperately needs to fix a lot of what they do and how they do it. It's getting better. It's definitely getting better. But remember, it took them over two decades to put Black Sabbath in, uh, who should have been a first-year automatic inductee, just to start this rant. And, you know, I'm not going to be like Don from that metal show and, like, go off on, you know, everything that they do wrong. But, you know, I, I do feel I have some points here. Uh, you know, the, the, the nominees this year... Uh, the people who won, uh, we have the Doobie Brothers. Um, you know what? I, I'm fine with the Doobie Brothers. I don't think there's a big problem with that. I think they're very, very influential and did a lot in the music industry for their genre. It's soft rock, but it's rock. And I don't, and I don't want to start on the, the rock versus whatever thing. And, you know, I think there should be a possibly you know non-rock acts should probably be put in a separate category of contributor slash you know importance to the genre you know much like they did the initial inductees of the blues uh, going into Whitney Houston absolutely this is one of the greatest voices of all time it should be protected she should be deified vified for her you know just raw talent I I have no problem with that again if up to me you know, non-rock acts would have a separate wing. Uh, Depeche Mode, yeah, okay. I, I, I mean, I'm not, I, I think they were a much bigger deal in Europe. And I think that's where a lot of this vote comes from. So, I, you know, I won't comment on that too much. But other than, yeah, I kind of like them. Uh, Nine Inch Nails, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, you know, people are arguing if they're rock or not. Yes, they're rock. You know, synthesized industrial rock, whatever. They're rock. They're huge. They're sh amazingly influential. You know, my only caveat to that is, you know, you should probably just induct ministry along with them uh, in general terms since, you know, in my opinion, Trent Reznor spent so much of his early career in sound ripping off Uncle Alan ministry. You know, I don't think you include one without the other. That's just me. T-Rex. No. T-Rex. You know, influential or not, there's, you know, you look at this list in terms of people who are influential, you know, I, I don't think they're on that level in terms of mainstream is like, you know, most people know Bang a Gong, if that, you mention their name, no one knows who the hell you're talking about. I don't think it's hall worthy, you know, good band. I don't, I, I like them. I, I've, I even know more songs than Bang a Gong, but I don't think they're hall of fame worthy. Uh, Notorious B.I.G., again, Something I have no problem with, put them in the, uh, you know, importance to rock, separate wing, whatever, you know, in, in my good opinion. So here's the, and then we're just going to stick to, you know, not other people I think should be in there, but just the people who were nominated this year that got weirdly snubbed. Uh, Dave Matthews Band, I don't have a strong opinion on them. And they're, to me, they're a little kind of new and they'll probably get in eventually, wasn't their year, you know, that shit happens. Pat Benatar, yes, she should have been in. Uh, that That's silly, said she didn't. <clears throat> uh, Soundgarden, uh, again, uh, I think I'm on the same, uh, same brand, and I'm a giant Soundgarden fan. If, you know, I you saw my tribute to Chris Cornell uh, last year. You know, I love them, and, I, you know, and I, I think they're an incredibly important, especially part of that music uh, genre that, you know, moved... Uh, you know, the rock industry along through the 90s just on that, not to mention the millions of records they sold, the incredible talent they had, you know, all of that stuff. Not their year, I can let it slide. Judas, and Priest, no, they should have been in, they should have been in, they should have been in uh, almost initially. That's, you know, oh, okay, 
Rock was the Rock Hall of Fame was eighty six. You know, maybe that about that point, maybe not. But you know, by the late nineties, you know, their their importance to their genre of rock is you know unquestionable. And I think uh, a lot of that is just you know it's 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 metal snobbery, it's hard rock snobbery. You know, and we see this every year. Uh, you know, they you know it's good that they finally get nominated, but yes, they they belonged in it a long time ago. If you know, as I said, it took them two two decades to put Sabbath in. It should have been you know an, an automatic inductee from year one. But you know, if if Sabbath invented heavy metal, Judas Priest definitely codified it. Uh, then Lizzie also, yes, absolutely. Their their influence on hard rock and heavy metal is one of the bigger bands. I don't think, and I think a lot of that is just, you know, they don't quite get the notoriety they should for what they've contributed to the genre, what they've contributed to rock. You know, criminally, criminally underrated. I, I do think they're going to see their day because they are one of those bands that's a little bit more respected than a lot of the others here. Motorhead, I can't even... You know, I ran about this way more than I should, but if all I'm going to say is if you do not understand why Lemmy belongs in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you have no business voting on a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's simple. Ton Rundgren, I do not know whatsoever. That whatever. Uh, Rufus featuring Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan's already in, and it's whatever. Again, one of those things I think should be put on the sidelines as a great contributor, uh, but, you know, they didn't make it in, yeah. Uh, craft work, uh, I do think, you know, j- just for their what they've done with music, you know, probably deserves a nod. Another one I think probably will go in at some point. MC5, you know, beyond a doubt, uh, you know, you know, I want to talk about Priest or Motorhead, you know, these are the three bands I think are like, you know, what the F, why have we not done this already? You know, this is like one of the creators of punk rock. You know, they're contemporaries from Detroit. Iggy and the Stooges went in uh, 10 years ago. Uh, not having MC5 in there, I think, is absolutely ridiculous. They should go alongside. Should have gone in with Iggy and the Stooges, and both of them should have gone in a long time ago. And, uh, you know, I can put me on a whole different rant about, you know, how badly punk rock is treated. You know, we've got, what, Green Day and the Sex Pistols and Iggy and the Stooges and, and then a few others. But, you know, it's like, you know, where's Black Flag? Where's Dead Kennedys? Where's the Misfits? You know, that you know punk rock is, you know, beyond my normal rant about, you know, how heavy metal is snubbed. Punk rock's even been snubbed worse, especially a lot of these bands from, you know, the late 70s, early 80s that influence so, so, so much of what we listen to now. And basically, you know, the the gray ponytails that run the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame are just, you know, they don't, they didn't like punk, they didn't like metal, they have their tastes, and it still shapes what the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is to this day. And, you know, and it, it's, a, it's a waiting game, I think, in a lot of places for a lot of these people to die off and a lot of, the newer voters to come in, you know, and give their opinion, you know, uh, you know, the Dave Grohl's of the world, the Ozzy Osbournes, you know, we are, we are, we're seeing more of these bands because they've started bringing in more people who were, you know, influenced by these bands and, you know, are fans or contemporaries and know how important they are. And we're starting to see the nominations and, you know, uh, inductees more and more, I think, uh, you know, in terms of me in, in the hard rock metal punk genres, uh, you know, and, you know, I'm not going to rant on, you know, you put pop and hip hop acts and funk and jazz and disco. It's, it's fine. You know, I think rock and roll is, is, is so big, you know, you can incorporate a lot of that stuff into it, but I think, you know, you, to just to avoid bitching, you should, you know, probably categorize it and said like, like, look, this isn't a rock and roll band, but this is important to, you know, the overall genre in one way or another, and I don't think like I don't think Whitney Houston is a bad choice just just on her voice alone. I just I'll put her in anything, you know, her personal life and problems and tragedies aside, that that is like a, a once in a lifetime talent and should be protected and loved. Uh, you know, Biggie for, you know, basically a dude with two albums, but two albums that like, you know, changed an industry so much and, you know, is definitely influential in a lot of, uh, you know, modern rock. 
you know, stuff like that. Don't have a problem with it uh, in all actuality. But I will have sour grapes. So you put them in over, and along with friggin' T Rex over Motorhead, Judas Priest, and MC5. I don't, you know, that on the surface is going to bug me. Anyways, that's all the salty semen has about it on this uh, really quick edition of the Clash with a Manatee podcast. Uh, next time, going back to some more military stuff, been kind of sidetracked here, but you know, I, I got to say what I got to say and get it out. So appreciate you letting me rant. Talk to you freaks later. Peace.